Well, to X-ray Nigeria's security challenges and efforts being made by the military to address the situation, we're joined remotely by two retired military officers, Brigadier General Mohamed Galadanchi and uh, the former commandant of the Nigerian Army School of Artillery, Jaji, and Captain Ali Umar, a security consultant. Let me start with uh, the general, retired uh, general. Thank you so much, both of you, for uh, joining us. Uh, first, let's uh, begin with the redeployment, uh, the latest move by the you know, uh, military uh, top echelon to uh, redeploy senior officers in the military in an attempt, maybe it's part of the new strategies that were announced yesterday that the military has now to tackle insecurity in the country. What are your thoughts on that, on this redeployment? Thank you very much. Uh, well, I don't know. I think um, the military high command have a responsibility and um, these commanders are serving under them so they know better whether what they are doing is to re-immigrate the, the, the uh, operations or otherwise but you see the problem we are having with this uh, security challenge is that of not really finding a solution or a way out for the crisis. What do I mean by this? You see, all of us are complex to this problem. Why? Because I said, I said this is from the government side. The leadership of government has not sat down and analyzed and find out what is even the cause of this situation that we have found ourselves. We are only trying at every time to see how we are going to react to situations. And for as long as we don't know the cause of the problem, uh, so that we can be able to uproot it from the root of the this, we are not going to get uh, out of it. Why, how do you see people going out abducting people, killing people, collecting a hundred million, and when you see them in the bush, when you, uh, you, you, they are arrested, you find out that they don't look like people who can, who even own 50,000 naira, which means that is somebody who is collecting that hundred, uh, uh, hundred million. So, first and foremost, we must, we, government must try as much as possible and find out what are the real causes of these uh, challenges? Who are, is, are there people behind it? If there are people behind it, why are these people doing what they are doing? Because I, can, I cannot just imagine uh, people will come out, come out and uh, say they are, they are going to uh, abduct people in, uh, in, in, in schools and whatever and uh, they can even confront the military and uh, start killing uh, everybody everywhere and nobody can say this is the reason why these people are doing this thing so i think we need the government needs to sit down and put their thinking cap and find out what actually is behind this security challenge uh, Retired Brigadier General, you're saying that we are being reactionary and not proactive. But let me ask you, as one who has been in the military before, do you think that this is surmountable or do you think that uh, it, this is beyond us? Because the narrative in recent times is that the Nigerian military can overcome this. We do so well in the ECOMOG, in other missions we go for. So this should not be a challenge. However, it seems to become, it seems to be a challenge that has refused to go away. So is it something the Nigerian military is capable of bringing to an end? In your own honest opinion. Nigerian military, the Nigerian military is more than capable of uh, solving this problem. But the problem is, in every crime, the criminal study the security forces and they make sure they find a weak spot in, where they are going to attack. So it's not a question of having enough boots on the ground. 
or in up guns or whatever. It is a question of people who must establish the 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 the, uh, the, the intelligence that will give them uh, the information ahead of uh, what they are doing. I, I had the president said uh, he was disappointed when he went to the prisons about the intelligence. And sincerely, uh, somehow, somewhere, the intelligence are at fault. But it is not only the intelligence. There are people, there is the Office of the National Security Advisor that is supposed to collate this thing, that is supposed to interpret this thing, that is supposed to give the military uh, the information that is required to be proactive. But when the, this information is not forthcoming, the military will have to work based on what is on the ground. That is when a threat is, uh, is, has already become reality. And that is why when these people uh, send a letter that they are going to law school, the military in their proactiveness already deployed in that place. And it is based on that deployment, they realize that these people are living somewhere within that general area. And they went out to, 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 to deal with them. And unfortunately for us, the, the, the social media and even the mainstream media is not helping matters. Uh, three people were killed, I think, uh, on the military side. But over 20 to 30 people were killed in, uh, uh, from the uh, bandits. But nobody reported that. Retired Brigadier so, it's possible because uh, that information was not given when it was supposed to be given. But please stay with us. We'll go on a quick break and return. And when we return, we'll have retired Captain Ali Umar join us in this conversation as well. Welcome back. You're still watching News Night coming to you live from the nation's capital, Abuja. We have, we still do have our guests. Uh, Brigadier General Mohamed Galadanchi, the former uh, commandant of the Nigerian Army School of Artillery, Jaji, and Captain Ali Umar, still very much with us, but let's stay with uh, Captain Ali Umar uh, for now. Thank you for joining us. Uh, well, let's take it from the Council of uh, State meeting that was held yesterday, and we're told, Nigerians were told that the military uh, will come up with new uh, strategies. Do you really think that the military echelon still has new or fresh ideas uh, with which they can prosecute this war against terrorism? Thank you and good evening. Whether they do or not is left to be seen now, isn't it? Um, we have how many months to go to May 23rd? We are seeing a um, uh, redeployment and uh, uh, we're looking at it. Let's see what they can do between now and uh, May 29th, 2023. It's less to be seen. Uh, I say it's left to be seen because uh, to pass a verdict now will be preempted. If you recall, it was in your studios. I once said uh, sometime in 2023 when the national National Security Advisor released a, a policy document and I said something about reviewing or waiting to have that conversation two years from that 2020 date. Uh, uh, two years from time will tell us whether it was a well-written essay or it was indeed a national security policy statement. So by this evening, two years ago, or today, two years later, we should be able to say whether that document was an essay or it was really something we could work with. So let's wait and see. We have nine months to decide. Let's do this again nine months from now and see whether indeed they do, do we well have something. Do we have nine months to wait? I mean, you, the, the Senate Minority Caucus actually gave the president the matching orders to you know do something about the state of insecurity in nigeria in six weeks otherwise he'll be impeached um i, I mean i spoke with the former commissioner of police uh lagos fatai washini who said no six weeks is even too much that uh, it should be immediate so when you say we should wait for nine months do we have nine months to wait 
Well, the Senate committee must be a very ambitious group of people if they expect six weeks to do what seven years could not do. That's my position anyway. That's my opinion because even seven years we couldn't get this far or X far. I wonder how six weeks will bring about us getting any results from the same person, the same situation, the same place. Okay. That's, uh, and Captain, that's my position. Great. Uh, Captain, in the past, you have said that what we have as insecurity is a fallout of misgovernance. I wonder if you still maintain that position. If yes, then do you think that the guns and the jets can solve the problem? No. You see, I once asked about why the army has to be the sole custodian of the fight against terrorism. It's one task she has taken upon by herself, for herself, with herself, which she is clearly not going to succeed in delivering. I once asked what the blueprint for counterinsurgency and insecurity in Nigeria was for other agencies that actually should be stakeholders, but have been denied that role. What's the blueprint for immigration in counterinsurgency? What's the blueprint for the corrective institutions, what we want to call prisons in a counterinsurgency? What's the blueprint for even the customs? What's the blueprint for the DSS? What's the blueprint for every... Look, there are like 16 security agencies in this country. Yesterday, about this time, we sat down with Beacon Security and, and Kabir. And we did an analysis and presentation of these things as they sit figuratively, statistically. And we are looking at what I want to call a deluge of security agencies, all of which are waiting for the army to make a move before anything happens. You don't fight this kind of wars like this. So it's back to what we are saying again. What can the army do? in the next few months to, uh, to 20, 23 May, we'll have this conversation maybe um, 30th May, 2023, just like I told you in 2020 about the uh, National Security Advisors well-written essay now. I think I have the right to call it just that. I uh, will do that to this particular redeployment on the 30th of May next year. All right, thank you very much, Ali Umar, Captain. And uh, we had earlier uh, retired Brigadier General Galadanchi uh, Umar joining us on Newsnight.